sequence XYZ, anything but with Kumar Silva. I'm at the Connect, the co-working space at the Shangri-La Hotel Colombo. Beautiful, quiet, productive working space. If you want to spend some time, please come here. It's a nice place. A lovely food as well. Uh, James again. James, apart from all the glamour and the glitz and all that, you also feel very strongly about the trials and the tribulations of the Maasai people in Kenya. What made you react in this particular way? What was the first exposure? Um, I was first exposed to it by a very good friend of mine, uh, Shannon Ribeiro, who, uh, who lives in the States. And she asked me to come along. They had a lot of problems with the previous guys that were helping them out with video videography and stuff. And honestly, it really wasn't my gig. It wasn't my... to go to Africa, it's, it's a huge thing to do. Huge. But, but um, when they told me about how wonderful their experience was, I felt like I, I at least owed it to myself to give it a, a try, you know. And seeing the way that these guys lived, it was just amazing. It really was like that. Amazing, as in what? How? How amazing? Sad. Well, it was. It was. It was both sad at the same time as it was beautiful because these these guys are living in villages on the on the edge of nowhere, and yet they still have this this happiness about them that is just. It's, it's something that I would prescribe to everyone on the planet. Like, they just have this innocence about them. You see these kids that are, honestly, it's that idea of a kid playing with a rubber tire and running. They're just so happy. It's unbelievable. Like, I mean, I, when I was there and I, I started reading, I was doing a, for my, for my uh, niece, I was recording a, a book, an audio book for her, and I, I just went to different places on the planet and reading these, these, these nursery rhymes to her and stuff. And these kids from nowhere, they just came out of the bush, right? And they just started sitting down and listening to me. And the, the smiles on these kids' faces, man, it was just, just you being there, you don't even have to do anything. Just being there makes them feel like they're important and makes them feel loved. But you're some strange white man from some other part of the world. Yeah. Beyond their world, actually. It is, I mean, it's true. And honestly, like, I was just, I was capturing this stuff in a documentary, I was filming it. I wasn't, I, they didn't know who I was and I'm not a celebrity there, I'm not, I'm not anybody there. I'm just somebody that's there that, that can't be helped but realise that we're, we're all connected. You know what I mean? Like that you have an interaction with these people and it's, it's, it's legitimate, it's real, it's something that you will remember for the rest of your life and it's something that they will as well. It's a real interaction. These are a First Nation people. You know, they don't, when we go out there, we stayed there for, for a, a week and a little bit more, I think, a bit, little bit over a week, and we had no water, there was no showers, nothing. We were living in a tent, and we were drinking out of bottles of water, and using wet wipes to clean up, and whatever. I, it must have been a nightmare for the women, but, but it was an absolute, there's nothing that I look back on that. And what have you done to help them, in your own way? I've got the word out that there are people like Alabaster Mobile Clinic that go out and they help. You know, these guys are, you know, you have these huge organizations, and I'm not going to name any, but you have huge organizations that are getting tons of money and they're not doing anything with it. These guys give their time for free. These are all doctors and nurse practitioners. They go over there, they spend money to, on their own flights, on their own hotels and their own, uh, you know, uh, expenses for everything. They don't ask for anything. If you give a dollar to these guys, that dollar goes to immunizations for the kids, vitamin A, so they can build up their resistance against uh, typhoid and all of the, the all of the the afflictions they have in that environment. And it's it's just amazing to see these guys do this sort of work, and they don't get known for it. When I did this documentary, one thing that really stood out to me was one of my friends just saw it, and he's just like, "Wow, man, that's one of the doctors on it." He was like, "Wow," he just was moved to tears. He was like, "I don't." I don't get a chance to tell my wife, like when I leave, I tell her that we're doing this work, but they don't get to see it. And now they do, they get to see that interaction between us and how it makes an impact on their life. Like how just a, a tablet can change a kid's life. Suddenly he has a better immunity, so he doesn't have an illness or, or worms that he can't stop. But those kids, they, they don't know anything else beyond what they really have and live in it. Well, I mean, these kids... It's, it's a different reality there. It is, it's a different reality, but these kids are heroes, man. Like, they, they literally, they go to bed at about nine o'clock at night, right? And they wake up at about four o'clock in the morning. They run to go and get water for the family, which takes about an hour there, an hour back. They come back at six o'clock, run to school. They're at school by about seven, start studying at seven, all the way, and I haven't even seen them eat lunch. I don't see them eat lunch, they never eat lunch. They come back, 
at about six o'clock. They run, some of these guys go run like six and seven miles home, you know, and it's just amazing. And I, I'm not saying that it needs to be changed. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that it's just, it's amazing that we have such complacency in our lives. You know, we get stuck in, in, in you know, in traffic. And, and because. <laughs> exactly. But at the same time, like, imagine if, imagine if we knew the tribulations and trials that these, go, these guys go through and then just go, you know what? <laughs> but, you know, smart up, butter cake. It's not that bad. <laughs> have you been able to bring about a change in their lives, you as Fiddy James? I think I have. I think I've... I've, I've what by, and how? By... by Creating this documentary, we managed to raise enough funds to build a small clinic there, and now they actually have a room where they can actually um, they can um, have birthing now, which is like the, the, one of the biggest problems that so many people die in childbirth, you know. And now they've got like something like that. That's huge. They've, we we uh, raised enough money to. Um, uh, Alabaster Mobile Clinic, which you can go to and, and see their stuff. They do amazing stuff. There's Sri Lankan uh, CEO, and, and she founded it, um, Shannon Rubera. And um, yeah, it's amazing stuff that they do. They, they, um, we got a mobile motorbike, right, with an ambulance on it, so that they can take people. We're talking about a place that is 18 hours away to the nearest medical dispensary. 18 hours walk. Walk, mind you. Walk. Okay. Like that's huge. Can, this, these, these guys, they're just heroes. And what they do is they live on the edge of civilization, but they keep their culture because it's important to them. That's why they do it. Not because you know they can have their mobile phones and their computers and stuff if they move into Nairobi or wherever it is. But they, they chose to live there. They chose to live there because they're Maasai, and that's I mean something that should be honoured, you know. And I think the same sort of thing happens everywhere in the world, but we see it as them being, you know, uh, natives and ignorant, but it's, maybe it's not them that's doing that, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's, we should look in the mirror as well, maybe there's things that, we have all this stuff, we have, you know, all the celebrities have all the money in the world and you still see them getting divorced, you see, still see them unhappy and in, on the Instagram it looks like they're having a great time, but are they really? Are they no. really happy? No, it's, like, it's just all <laughs> exactly. unreal world. Masai are going to, exactly, it's all like exactly. unreal world. Masai are going to move Kitaya kick, around the place and That's smiling real. and take photos of it in Instagram and show people because it's, yeah. it, they are enjoying themselves. You know what I mean? Like whatever it is that they're doing, it's not like whether they're, you know, going out and hunting or um, just being with the family, like it's just amazing. Their, their level of kinship is just... I want to change course now, last question. Uh, James, you've been called Jamie who lives off his father's shadow. <laughs> oh, wow. Unfair, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, like the thing is, is you want to, no matter what, he's going to be there. He's going to be, he's, he's a big shadow to, to step out of. But honestly, I think every man has his own path to walk. You know what I mean? And I think um, time will tell just how, sh how big a shadow I cast on my son. You know what I mean? Like, but at the same time, every person is their own person and they will do what they need to do. You find your love and you sail with it. That's it. You know, like I didn't choose to want to be an actor. I didn't choose that. I just, I was, I was born with it. No matter where you run to, it'll chase you. You know, any, anything that you want to do in life will follow you. I truly believe that. You know, I didn't choose to love music. I didn't choose to, to love to be on stage. It's just there and I love it. You know, I, I, I adore it. That moment when I'm, you know, when I'm in front of everyone and, and the crowd is going bonkers, that's, that's an amazing feeling. And not everyone gets that. Not everyone was made for that. Someone. That's where the shit flung at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, great talking to you. Thank you very much for being Thanks. my guest on the show. Uh, this has been anything but with Kumar Silva at the Connect, the co-working space at the Shangri-La Hotel Colombo. Um, beautiful place here. So thank you so much once again. We so meet much. you again next week, another time, another space.